thank you so much. Teenagers in the hospital need to communicate, and that's all we have is each other. I was diagnosed four or five weeks ago. I think I was kind of in a rush to get old. And then you have something like this happen, and then you realize that youth and possibility go hand in hand. You're not a five-year-old who can play with Legos while they're getting chemo. But you're not an adult. You don't want to be with like a bunch of 40-year-olds. I can see for miles and miles and miles and miles A Leaf of Knowledge by Brendan Ogg. I don't know what the doctor means by mostly within the radiation field. I don't know what the scan will look like one month, four months, four years from now. We were at the kitchen table and she said, Benjamin, you have a tumor. And I cried for 10 minutes and I cried to my doctor and I was like, I don't understand. I do everything right. I eat right. I don't get into drugs or alcohol. I'm like, why me? All I know is the air that I breathe in this instant springs sweet whisper into my lungs. You kind of just want your own space. I mean, I feel like that's just a common theme for teenagers. You just want your own space. We want to put you in a pediatric unit even though you're 22. I was just like, I need to like talk to someone. I feel, I don't even know what I feel. For me, it was embarrassing to go out with a mask on and being bald and being pushed around in a wheelchair. I was used to being able to hike around all the time. At the end of chemo, it was like the seventh or eighth round, that's when it really hit me when I saw myself in the mirror that that's not me. You know, you just feel so awful and you can't find anyone to be friends with. It's like the, it's the worst situation. This is a pretty significant point because I'm looking at the Atlantic Ocean. The love of my friends and family and the warm skin of her knee onto which I lay my cheek to sleep. <laughs>